Hey, what's up guys? This is Matt from the Octane Addicts. I just want to do a short video on ported compressor housings and why they're important. Um, basically, my background is I'm an application engineer for turbochargers uh, and air systems at a large diesel manufacturer. Uh, so far, I've worked on primarily electric products, but I uh, can do anything for machines and, and whatnot. Um, just wanted to kind of get out there the science uh, of what is going on with the ported compressor housing, why it's important, and why it really is one of the few things in the turbo technology world that has. It's not really an engineering trade-off. It's kind of a pure bonus, and there's no real negatives to uh, to what it is. Um, a fair warning, though, you uh, you do need to have some background, at least with compressor maps, and uh, maybe uh, some knowledge on what a compressor map is and how it works. But hopefully, I'll do a video in the near future on what that is. But I kind of wanted to cover this more in-depth topic uh, today. So anyway. Uh, looking at our compressor map, we of course have pressure ratio on the one axis and on the x axis is mass flow. Um, you can think of this basically as literally how much pressure your boost gauge reads um, divided by atmospheric pressure. And mass flow is actually how, much, how many kilograms of air per second you're flowing into your engine. Um, so basically, I won't go super in depth on this, you know, again, prior knowledge. The black lines here kind of represent your speed lines on your turbo, you're at 90,000 RPM, that's where it'll, uh, where it'll run on the compressor map. <coughs> uh, this is your constant speed line, so you can think of any point, operational point your engine has, let's say it requires a pressure ratio of 3 and a mass flow of 0.5, uh, it would be that point. And you can trace a line between that point and zero, and that is your R, your engine RPM line. So for this one, I just called it like 1800 RPM. Um, it would follow this line. So your your dot, uh, your operation point, would follow up and down this line, and on your efficiency islands. So anyway, again, I, I'll kind of keep it short on compressor maps. You kind of have, just have to know uh, how they work. Uh, so basically, this blue line here represents surge. Uh, anytime you go past that line to the left, you get kind of a whooshing sound, kind of, I guess it depends on the turbo or, you know, like kind of a lot of things, but generally it's a, like a whoosh sound. Uh, it may sound like your turbo is just like fluttering, like your wastegate's almost fluttering, but that's not actually what's happening. this happen so you can think of this point here let's say 1800 rpm again diesel this applies to gasoline engines as well but on the, on the diesel let's say you're 1800 rpm you load it up with torque you just you know you give it a bunch of hydraulic loading or whatever you, know, you, you tell it to go uh, it'll drop an rpm to the left so your constant load point kind of goes this way we'll say and you really, as your RPM drops, you get into this blue line here, which is surge. The thing we really want to avoid at all times for all applications is really not a place you want to run at for several reasons, which are kind of listed here. Um, the first performance reason you wouldn't want to run there. So when you hit an operation point, let's say you're in a surge, okay, you hear the whooshing sound, okay, well, what's going to happen? Basically, air is coming down, I'll use the other side, your air is coming down saying you're going into your engine here, your inlet air here coming into your engine that says you know what, it's too much pressure here and I can't hold it back so then your air tracks backward, like it actually comes back out of the compressor wheel uh, so basically you're at your limit of how much air you can force into the engine but your engine's still saying give me more air and of course are at your limit, so you can't actually give it more air, so you're kind of just stuck, you're kind of just at that operation point, at that RPM, you can't increase in power, you can't increase your RPM anymore, so you have to drop the load and try again, or drop the load and maybe do a smaller load step, like 20% power increase and then 20% again, so you don't get this big RPM group. Uh, so then I guess an engineer somewhere along the line figured out, well, how do we 
try to mitigate some of this backwards direction of the airflow. Uh, he did so by putting what a port, this goes all the way around, so you can think of this cross section going all the way around your turbo. This is actually your compressor housing. I have one on my desk at work, but uh, I guess you'll have to use your imagination or maybe Google one and see what it looks like. So anyway, your air inlet, just like that one, I just showed the, the bottom half as well here too. Air is coming in, coming in, and, it, and then you track to the left, you track to the left, you drop in your RPM, you got a big load, and it, and it says, oh, I can't make it, and it turns around and comes back through this port. See, it went through a little bit, you know, just maybe a few millimeters or you know, a couple centimeters even on how far it goes in your compressor housing, how it follows your compressor wheel, and decides to turn around and it can escape, and it's called a recirc cover, I guess I'll, I guess it depends on the manufacturer, what they call it, ported recirc, means the same thing, basically it recirculates and can be brought in by the compressor again. So when you see maybe you only have like a GT28 or GT30, something like a small turbo, and it's got a giant intake pipe on it, that's actually because of this. If you're not actually, your compressor inlet is not actually that large, it's actually the ported part that you're putting the piping onto so it can recirculate within there. Uh, this really, again, this changed the game. So instead of having this blue surge line where you know, you're getting up in pressure ratio, uh, you end up hitting your limit. Instead of that, let's hope this marker works, I haven't tried this one yet. Instead of that, you actually get, well, no such luck. Instead of that, you actually get, you know, one of these, here we go. A compressor line, or a surge line that moves out to the left and doesn't get like a knee. We, we generally refer that as a knee in the surge line. So this is usually right at the top of the pressure ratio and mass flow um, that a specified compressor wheel can handle. It has like a knee in it if it doesn't have a ported cover. Well, it actually can look a lot worse than this depending on what it is or um, what configuration it is. I'll we'll actually move the surge line out and you can get more RPM drift and all of a sudden see our operation point would not go into surge. Uh, another way of getting, you know, as I mentioned, getting stuck, like you get to a point where you can't get past that loading, you, you just kind of get stuck in your power, it's kind of like pushing a rope, you can only like push the air from the inlet to the outlet so hard before the rope kind of just, you know, loosens up and kind of comes back on you. Another thing that this will cause, and I'll try to illustrate this by drawing, is a large difference in thrust loading. Uh, so this is something I know race car guys never think of when they hear uh, surge or whatnot. It's not something you really think about, but it's certainly a major concern uh, in the high hour applications of diesel engines or production passenger car or something like that, where when you surge, you're actually, your pressure on your compressor wheel, because you're going backwards now with airflow and uh, all that kind of thing, your, your conditions actually, your pressure decreases on your compressor and your turbine is still cooking along with whatever turbine the pressure has from the engine, your, you know, your pistons are pushing against the air, forcing your turbine wheel around, and your pressure here is constant. Sorry, it looks like uh, my timer timed out, I can only film 10 minutes at a time apparently on my phone, so anyway, I'll carry on with the thrust log illustration. Basically, because of surge, your pressure changes, it drops in pressure on your compressor inlet side and your thrust side stays the same. So you think of your turbine inlet pressure, your, your pistons pushing air up into your exhaust manifold then into your turbo, pretty much stays at the same amount of pressure. Uh, but your, your compressor side goes down. So you think of it, area on this side with one pressure dropping and the area staying the same here, pressure staying the same. Now there's a big load pushing to the left uh, towards your compressor. So what this does is causes a lot of wear on your your thrust bearing on your compressor side. It's you know forcing up against there with extreme forces. So again, over time it will either wear out, or if it's bad enough, if you have enough difference in pressure, you can actually just instantly fail the the thrust bearing and just destroy it immediately. Uh, generally, uh, if you design
design your setup well enough. This won't happen because you, surge can happen kind of at weird operating points, I guess, uh, or at high altitude, maybe uh, a couple of times, depending on how you're loading your machine. But any, but you definitely over time would see it. So maybe in a race car application, you would you would lose a lot of performance from surge, but it may not be as risky for them to maybe fail a thrust bearing in that kind of application. Uh, another negative, and I'll go quickly over this, is uh, how loud it is. So. Hmm, I guess it really doesn't matter for race cars, autocross, what most of you might be interested in, but it's definitely a very big deal in the commercial diesel applications, uh, passenger car applications, where the driver doesn't want to sit and listen to this like super loud, like whooshing sound. It's very disturbing. It's very different from your engine sound, like the low uh, moan of an engine or even just driving down the highway. Not to mention that there are regulatory bodies, especially in the European Union, that uh, limit on how loud your machines can be. So if you have surge going on, you're likely not going to pass your regulations and not be able to sell machines in that country. Uh, I guess that's all I'll cover there. How else can we solve the problem of surge? If, if we didn't have this, what would we do? Long story short is, there's really nothing to directly replace it, but we can kind of band-aid uh, the situation with a trim change. So what is a the trim uh, of a compressor wheel? It's the same between compressor and turbine as how it's defined, but what it is is the inlet diameter squared divided by the outlet diameter squared. So the outlet being this diameter, so it's like you hear of like a, it's a Garrett 108 millimeter turbo. Well, they're talking about the compressor being 108 millimeters here, and then your inlet being this diameter, where the air is actually coming into your compressor wheel. So this diameter squared divided by this diameter squared. So for most applications, I think it's maybe like a 73 trim, we'll say it's maybe like an average. Uh, so 73 trim will be like this map, for instance. And if you go down in trim, so you shrink this size, it'll change the contour a little bit, but mainly you shrink the diameter of your inlet. It will move your surge line to the left. It will move your entire compressor map to the left, re reducing its flow capability. Move it all to the left. But also will shrink your compressor map. It will shrink the width of it. So you'll move it and also shrink it. What this ends up doing, and what we don't like, is it reduces on how wide of an RPM you can go. You can't go way out here in RPM for like a machine application. You go way out here and operate all over the place. Uh, it really restricts on how much space you have on the map to work with for your operating conditions. Uh, especially on gasoline engines where you do have a really wide range of operational RPM, it, it definitely becomes a point of concern. Uh, this also works the other way around, so let's say we go up in inlet diameter, we go up in trim, this will move it to the right, you'll get more flow, but also will move the surge line to the right. So this is not actually limited to ported housings though, or to non-ported housings, it also applies to ported housings. So we can do that, we can customize our trim, move our map around, and we can get the benefits of a, a recirc or a ported cover in that we get our instant benefit of increased surge margin. Let's see if I covered it all. Anything else? Map width, pressure ratio. Kind of, kind of get back to my earlier points on uh, peak torque. So basically, I'm just trying to point out here, if you move to the left far enough, you get in a surge. Let's say peak torque is somewhere to the left here, um, based on your operating conditions and all that. Uh, peak torque is over here. Well, since that's the, the peak, the, quite literally, the most torque you are ever going to have in your operational range, it can't force itself back. So it's loaded down with, your, with whatever electric load or hydraulic load. It's loaded down and it can't get back out of surge. So that's when, like I said earlier, you need to talk about different load steps and that kind of thing. So anyway, I think I've pretty much covered it all. If you have any questions, uh, let us know in the comments. I'll try to answer all the comments I see. Like I said, this is my, this is my day job, so uh, I can try to help or at least ask someone who, who really does know. Uh, there's a lot more super intelligent people, a lot more people than me that would know the answers. Uh, so anyway, just uh, give me a Holler in the comments and I can answer that. Anyway, until next time, thanks for uh, visiting.